Hi everyone, uh, my name is Luz Robles. I am a deputy district attorney in the county of Riverside. I've been a prosecutor for about five years now. Um, what a prosecutor does is essentially prosecute you for a crime, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony. Um, in other words, if you, let's say for example, are an adult and are arrested for a DUI, I would be the person who would review the police report, determine what charges to bring forward against you, and then I would essentially take care of the case against you until either you plead guilty or you go to trial. Um, that's what a prosecutor does, at least in the county level. It means a lot of things. Uh, out of all the attorneys in the United States, only 4% are Latino. Out of all the female attorneys in the United States, only 2% are Latinas. Obviously much more or much less are prosecutors. So it's a very unique experience in that I'm more often confused for an interpreter or for a defendant or even a defense attorney. It's very rare when they even consider me or think of me as a prosecutor before I say it. Um, you know, it's a constant reminder that we need more of us in the field. We need more representation um, and it's possible. It's just a matter of putting your mind to it and working hard. To be honest, there aren't a lot of Latin Americans in the science field or not um, in terms of what I've experienced so far since I've been in school. I went to community college out of high school and then decided that science was where I wanted to go. So when I got my bachelor's degree, I transferred from my community college to my undergraduate um, and got my bachelor's and then decided to get my master's right after my bachelor's. And so as I've just kind of continued on in my education and like gotten more and more familiar and deeper into the science realm, I've noticed that there are so many um, different backgrounds, but there isn't a lot of people that do come from the Latinx background. So um, not only Latinx, but just um, being a female, very male dominated in the science field. So like I work for a very small startup company and there's only six of us in the lab and of the six, I'm the only woman working in there. So it's, um, it's, it isn't discouraging uh, whatsoever being the only female and then being a Latina in this field. Um, it's kind of like rewarding to know that like I'm doing something that a lot of people probably just don't even get the opportunity to coming from our background. Right now is like a really great time to be an artist because you have now like the Cheech Museum doing these giant shows with like a lot of Latinx uh, artists, which is like amazing. And you live like in California, which there's a large community. So it's great to be able to create these pieces of art on these giant walls that represent like our culture and our people. and like. It helps uplift the space and the community. And I get the honor to get to travel around the United States and paint these murals and go into these small towns where there's a very small art, I mean, small uh, Latino X community. So I try to make something that helps like represent them and feel like they're, um, they're known because there's not a lot of artwork or things that like reminds them of home or of the of their culture or the heritage. So it's great to be able to do that and get people that are, are not Latino X and be like, oh, what is this about? And I want them to learn more about your people and your heritage. So that helps like change the whole town, you know? So it's great that I get, it's actually, it's awesome to be able to do that because it took a while for me to be able to do art like that or even get the chance to do that. So I'm very happy that uh, I am Latino X and I get to do art that helps uplift and inspire people all around. I feel similarly, I think that, um, you know, we come from a history of lots of resistance as as communities. Um, you know, Latinidad is so broad, like there's Black Latinos, Asian Latinos, Indigenous Latinos. And sometimes it's hard to be the ones that you're kind of sometimes the only person in the room. I feel that way working in um, affordable housing, like finance, 
financing and um but i think it's really beautiful to be able to show up as our full selves and know like we have a big community behind us um and know that our stories really matter and, and you're bringing in like a new narrative that isn't heard um and um and also i think there is difficulties because like sometimes you're the only person speaking up for community in these spaces um but know that it, it does feel really powerful and I really appreciate what Le what Leandra said like um it's not discouraging I think it's even more encouraging to like push more to be better um and to also know that um you're making a deep impact by just being there um I would probably say it was a whole host of different life experiences at the end of the day my goal is to simply help people in the criminal justice system on the one hand, ensure that a defendant gets a fair trial and is treated fairly, but more importantly, that victims' voices are heard and that when a victim who looks like me um, feels welcomed, feels like she's able to communicate with me, English or Spanish, um, it's very powerful um, and I think it's important. Um, I think oftentimes victims of color can be overlooked, can be think of or thought of less. Um, so I think it's important to have representation. Like I, said, I was like always into science. I was one of those nerds. Um, I was actually, <laughs> yeah, I was um, into a lot of different things, but science has always piqued my interest. So once I made it to my undergrad, I was kind of a lost puppy. I knew I liked science, but I didn't really know where it can take me. Um, so when I graduated with my bachelor's the summer before I started my master's, I did an internship. And that internship absolutely like blew my mind because it was the first time I got hands-on experiment uh, experience working in a lab. So I was learning different lab techniques. Um, and the second that I like started it, I was hooked. So um, I think that was a turning point of just like seeing where like my interest was and there's actually a field and more it's so, it's a lot deeper than what I originally thought. Science can go so far and be so broad. So to um, to to know that like I get just a little sliver of what I do um, is really exciting. So that is kind of like what kept me going and it's still keeping me going to this. Like I run experiments almost on a daily basis, and when I get results, I still get super excited. Like the first time I've ever done it. So um, it's really I think that that what's inspiring to me is like I started from absolutely nothing in a lab and now I'm to a point where I train other people on how to do things so um it's just constant learning and that's something that I really have always enjoyed in school and then now in my field for me I've always been uh, drawing since I was a little kid and I just still doing it now like every day just drawing and painting and during my teenage years, I got introduced to graphic design. So I started learning Photoshop and Illustrator. And it was thanks through an artist that came and spoke in our art class that showed me these programs like, hey, you can actually paint your drawings on this computer. I'm like, you can do that? I thought Photoshop was just for editing photos. So from that, I learned more how to do more graphics. And I got into clothing and I went to college like, all right, maybe I should pursue this more and try to get a degree because I felt like if you were to get any job, you need a degree and you need the experience, which I had very little of. So I went and got my graphic design degree and I was able to intern for a clothing company that I admired so much growing up when I was young. It was all like graffiti inspired type of clothing and that was run by a same with my MX person. And from that, I was able to get a job and doing graphics for this huge company and learning how to do production design. And I did that for around eight years, working in different companies. But I was thinking about at first, like, oh, maybe I should join this because that's where I can make money off of art instead of, hey, is this going to make me happy? And that's the part I totally did not think about. And through the years, I started not. I started to be less and less happy because I'm always doing stuff what other people want or what was hot instead of like what I like doing. So I would, and I was also missing uh, an art community. So through those last couple of years, I, like, I joined a gallery. I started working at helping doing workshops and 
taking all these classes of how to do more traditional art. But always back in my head was like, hey, you got to move to Los Angeles because that's where like there's more art opportunity there. In San Diego, there's not that much. There's not that much murals at the time. There's not a lot of galleries that I was really into. So through a really stressful, angry day, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to move to L.A. and hopefully uh, I find something to do with my art. I have complete trust in my art. I know it's going to be a difficult journey, but as long as I don't give up and keep doing it, something's going to pop off. So I would go to all these art events. I get to socialize, have to socialize with people and from curators to other artists. And through that, I got more opportunities and I'll start. Now I wasn't always waiting for the opportunities. I had to go and look for them. You know, I can't expect everything to fall on my lap because I was a nobody. So it took six years of like just hard work. And I'm still working hard and hustling just to like find mural gigs, do art shows, just replying to email, just constantly working, you know. If it's a slow season, all right, then I'll start working on my own artwork. I'll paint the back. But yeah, that's um that's what inspired me to do what I'm doing now. It's just this is what I love doing and I'll continue doing it till my arm falls yeah, off. So what inspired me to do this? So um just seeing like a lot of challenges in my own community. Um my mom was an environmental justice organizer. And so I was like, okay, let me go work for the city and like be an infiltrator on the inside. But honestly, um, the work is decades long. And I, I feel like I, um, the reason why I, I am where I'm at is um, I'm like, you have to network and like move to different places and, and pursue power at the end of it, because like our communities have a very imbalanced um, access to it. And power money is like where decisions get made. Um, and so that's why I chose to be in this field to um, to give that back to community. Um, but it's also really difficult. Um, sometimes like there's cer certain things where um, I think about leaving my field, but um, I, I know that there's like new generations who are, are working to be a part of it too. And so if there's, um, just opportunities where, um, you know, if there's anything that was interesting about what we do, I would say like continue networking with us, like um, get those internships. Like um, that's how I like move, moved up in my field and, and have like people who are really champions for you um, across not, not only in the Latino community, but across like a, a lot of other communities of color because we're really looking out for each other in whatever industry we're a part of. Um, and even right now, I'm like, oh, wow, how could my organization, I, I give out money, um, like partner with some of the folks on this call too, um, to just elevate the work that they're doing. I don't know if it'd be a turning point, but most recently, in about two months ago, I tried my first sexual assault case. And in that case, um, I won't get into the too much detail, but it was basically a grandpa who touched two daughters, two two granddaughters. Um, that case went to trial in 2017, and even with a confession, the jury walked him. They found him not guilty. He got out of jail, and about a month later, or, or sorry, about a year later, another granddaughter came forward and accused him of the same stuff. That case finally went to trial in August. Um, the trial lasted pretty much all month, but ultimately that jury believed the victim and found him guilty. He's now facing a 65 year sentence before his life sentence starts. He's a six year old man, so I think it's safe to say he's gonna go away for a while, if not for the rest of his life. Um, it was rewarding and inspiring and affirming and it showed me that I chose the right career path. Um, that, you know, allowing these girls to state their piece and say what they needed to say in court um, showed me that I chose the right career path. Um, for sure, that internship that I did before I started my master's program was like the absolute turning point. The second I like started working in a lab, I was hooked. Um, 
but I think it was more so what was cool was that I did an internship and the instructor for that internship for the summer was actually a faculty member of the school that I was going to for my master's in the fall. Um, so before the summer had even ended, I had asked him if I can maybe join his lab or just observe being a member in his lab um, and kind of just see what kind of research they do in his lab. Um, and he was he was nice. He was like, yep, let's get going. So during the summer, I got trained and the lab that he worked in or the science that he did was primarily working with mosquitoes and fruit flies. So that was something that I was just like, what? Like, I, I'm not a bug person, but um, they were just like, yeah, we're going to train you on how to run experiments on fruit flies. We're going to train you on how to um, come up with or work with mosquitoes. And I was like, OK. Um, the second I like got really good at working with them and knowing how to run the experiments using them. So basically what we would do was um, feed them either bacteria, uh, toxins, and then treat them with pharmaceuticals. So they would be eating all of this stuff and we would be able to monitor whether they lived or died based on what they were eating and how they were being treated. So it was super cool and it was super fascinating. So once I completed my first experiment, successfully with that because it was a lot of trial and error. It took me maybe about like four months just to even get to the point where I can start testing. Um, I got my first results and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I felt like it was so rewarding because I had put in so much effort of like learning and it was starting a new school and starting something that like I had never done before. It was learning all of these techniques that I had never done. Um, but the second I completed that first experiment, I was like, oh my God, like we could do a lot more than this. So since then, I've just kind of been like, eat, like, ooh, what else can I get my hands on? I started working with a lot more, um, not dangerous, but a lot more serious bacteria. So by the time I finished my master's program, my thesis was on anthrax. So I was working directly with anthrax bacteria um, in still with fruit flies. And so I got so proficient to the point where when my professor from my master's program left, he was establishing a new fly lab for USDA, for the government up north. And he asked me to come in to show his new lab mates uh, how to run these tests. So I took drives um, up and down just to do that. So that was really, really cool to be able to um, know that I started from nothing to be able to even teaching people and then helping open an entire lab for the government. Like that's crazy. And um, and then even now, so once I started this job as uh, at a startup company, um, there were these experiments that I just like, I don't know how to do, but I have this background where now I can read scientific material and I can just be like, oh, okay, I kind of know what they're doing. And then I go and do it. And like the beginning when I first started this job, again, I didn't know how to run an experiment. And now I'm the only one in the lab that runs it successfully. So... <laughs> Not to brag, but I did put in the work and I put in the effort and like the blood, sweat and tears. Science is very frustrating sometimes where like I will run an eight hour experiment and then get absolutely no results. And I'm like, cool, I just wasted my entire day. But um, it's it's just trial and error at that point. But uh, it's so much fun. And then when you do get your um, experiments and you get su successful experiments, it's so rewarding. So I believe that uh, Ms. Hernandez put in our intros. In science, we run these experiments and we write papers and like the ultimate goal is to get them published. So I am fortunate enough to be on about like five papers that got published. Um, so after my first one, I was like, oh my God, these like, it's just so many constantly new things that I had no idea because coming from our background, my parents didn't even graduate high school. They have no, like they didn't ever tell me like, you need to go to college, you need to do this. Um, I just kind of went for it and this is my own path that I've decided and kind of just navigating my own way and finding people that are helping me and you do find those people you find those people that like hey this is the next step I want to do like how can I get there and there are people along the way at every step that help you get to that next level um so it it's very rewarding to me on a daily basis of where I'm at I love what I do and the experiments that I run and what I get to do, it's like so cool to me. To me, I come to work and I'm like, oh, I'm not working. I'm just running experiments all day to see if it works, you know? <laughs> when I moved to LA, I think that was the biggest thing just because it's like, I have to take that big, uh, 
what's it called, a big step forward of like kind of risking it all. I kind of felt like because I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not, but I need to at least do this. So once I'm old, I'm like, I'm not thinking about, oh, I should have moved to LA. I should have, I should have taken that risk, you know. And you know, I did it, and. It was it was hard in the beginning because I didn't know what to do or where to go to, you know, looking at Craigslist for gigs to see what I can find. And luckily I was able to find a friend who was like, hey, this person needs help. Want to go help them out on their mural? I was like, all right. And doing, doing that, I got more experience at like how to approach a mural, how to work large scale, learn all the mistakes. It's all about, about doing art. It's always about learning. So even learning through mistakes helps out a lot because you know, like, okay, I'm not going to do that again because this happened or don't mix this material. So this can works better. But it's through trial and error. And I'm always going to be learning, even though people are like, oh, Master Daniel. Like, no, no, I'm always going to be a student because I'm always learning. But I would love, but whatever knowledge I get, I like to pass it on to the next person. So. I, I love doing that, and if I don't always have the answers, I'll show them someone that might that will probably have some. But yeah, through doing that whole move to LA helped out because I wasn't always pushed when I was young. As long as my parents were like, as long as you don't get in trouble, you're okay. I'm like, all right, well, I have these other people to my our teachers who believed in me and looked straight in my eye like, you're a painter, you're an amazing painter, like you're an artist, you can do this. And I'm just shy looking away like, okay, like, no, you yeah, have to believe it. Okay. So I had to learn how to believe that in myself. Cause I don't know how many people you approach and they're like, oh, what do you do? Like, oh, I'm an artist. I'm okay. It's like, come on, be like, be proud. You know, if you're an artist, you're an artist, you know, you don't go to a, a doctor be like, hey, are your doctor like, yeah, I'm a doctor, I'm okay. It's like, no, I don't, I don't trust you. Like, <laughs> if you're not confident, then I don't want to deal with your business. But yeah, it's just learning that, you know, it's always tough in the beginning. And running your own business is very difficult. It's a lot of, a lot of hard work. And when things get busy, it gets even harder. And when things are slow, it gets hard. It's just a learning experience and just have to have faith in, in yourself and your craft and be surrounded people who also believe in you, you know, because it's great to have that motivation, like, hey, don't quit, like, you're amazing, like, because we get in our heads a lot and, like, I'm not good enough or this and that, but, yeah, just don't give up. That's all I have to say. Just keep doing it. If you've failed or lost a gig, it's okay. There's plenty more. Just keep on going. Turning points where... Um, going to college, um, I, that was it was like a mind blowing experience because I went I went to USC. It's like what they call a predominantly white institution, um, and then I realized I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, all these people get to bring their life experiences, and it really shapes like whatever industry they're going to end up working in. Um, and so I decided to study like policy, like urban planning and real estate development. And I was like, oh my gosh, you all don't know what you're talking about. You don't know communities the way um, that we live. Um, and so I think now 10 years later, I'm at this other turning point where I get to be in my field and like resource communities. Um, and it's really exciting because I think I'm, I'm taking like what Leandra and Mr. Th Toledo said to heart because I'm also in a space where I'm a young person, a young person of color, uh, a queer young person of color. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I have all these things where people see me a certain way, but I have to believe in myself just the way I believed in myself, like going, going to college. Um, and, and yeah, so just at this turning point where I have to be confident um, and really shape like what, who, who I show up for um, in these spaces um, because, you know, we get to talk to like the mayor's office, we get to talk to like these people in high positions of power, but I'm like, you're just a person like me. And, um, you know, our, our thoughts are really shaping like how communities are invested in and, and that's um, really important. Um, I think it's also important like to remember like 
to stay rooted in community and like, okay, I'm just one person. Um, how do I make sure that I'm listening to different voices that don't often get the platform that they deserve? Um, I work in the domestic violence unit, so I think it's very rewarding um, and empowering to see these women speak up. A lot of the times they are of color. Um, they don't sometimes know the language, know their rights, they're emotional, they're dependent on their abuser, and oftentimes they're too scared to talk. And so I think it's rewarding to be able to see them build up that courage, that strength, and say enough is enough um, and fight back. And it's a privilege to be able to represent that voice and pursue the case and show them that they're believed and that a jury will convict. Um, so I find that the most rewarding. Thanks for your time. I think with like, if you ask any scientist, not just uh, being a Latina in science, but uh, the best part about science is like when I'm running an experiment and I have a question of why I'm running this experiment and what I'm expecting to get out of it, or I'm um, expecting a certain result or something and I get it and I get like what I'm looking for or I answer the question and it's either what I was expecting or something completely different. The most rewarding thing is just for that little moment when I get my results, I know something that nobody else knows until I share it with everybody else in my lab. Like that's just like something that's mine. And I'm like, cool, I did like, whether it be, it's a very tiny sliver of whatever I'm looking for. But for that moment, I'm like, oh, I ran this experiment. I executed it. And now this like little knowledge is mine. Like no one can take this away from me. And now I get to share it with someone else. You no, know, I just want to leave something behind where, it creates a positive change towards everyone. And I get the opportunity to create all this artwork, but also help other youth artists learn techniques or I show them how to use spray paint and, and how to approach murals. And now they're doing it. And what brings me more joy is they end up teaching other people how to do it too, you know? Because a lot of stuff I either got taught by someone for like school or Someone just taught me for free and all they asked in return is to pass that knowledge to someone else. You know, speaking truth to power, like I, I think it's really um, important that uh, people in power hear our narratives and just are able to shape um, what communities um, will look like in the future. Um, and so I think that brings me a lot of joy, the fact that um, when I speak to different community organizations, like they feel seen in my own story too. Um, and something I shared recently was like, you know, these white people ask for everything, like you ask for everything too, please. <laughs> because like, we need to hear like um, what your needs are and, and how we're not doing enough. Um, and I think it was really powerful what, um, our prosecutor colleague said, just like, even in, in terms of capital only, 96% of capital in uh, globally is held by white men. And so it's really powerful to be in a space where we're, I'm investing in communities and communities of color. Um, and there needs to be more of us in this space. So if you're interested um, or just wanna learn more, let me know.